Okay, so some I know it's uh, technically not finals week hasn't started yet, and I lied in my last video. Regardless, this is fairly short, so I figured what's the harm. Um, now, for some of you who may not want to use Kimu, albeit I'm not sure why you wouldn't, but regardless, if you don't want to and you have VirtualBox, you want to run a VirtualBox, or we want to run the operating system in VirtualBox uh, instead, which we'll probably end up doing as our kernel gets bigger and bigger because then Kimu will start becoming less efficient. Um, we're going to need to convert our binary file into an image file, or a, a, a live image ISO file uh, that can be burned to a disk if you are booting it on real hardware, or that can be put into a live CD in VirtualBox. So to do this, um, we need to install CDR tools, so that's uh, uh, CDR tools. And uh, then we have, with that, we have we can we can use uh, the command mkisofs make isofs. Uh, we specify our output. Oh, and I should probably mention uh, we have our output here. Um, out, whoopsies, uh, out dot bin right there. And. Uh, so uh, we just have to specify our output. Uh, so mkisofs. Um, we'll call it um, os dot iso. Specify the binary file. So out dot bin. Whoopsies. And then, oh, first before we do that, we have to. The iso needs to be. Uh, a certain size. So in order to pad the binary file out to properly convert it to an ISO, we need to basically just add a bunch of zeros at the end of the file. So to do that we're going to, uh, without editing the bootloader, we're going to truncate out dot, uh, dot bin s 1200k. And if we go and we look at out.bin, we'll see right here is kind of the end of our bootloader, and then we have all of this extra stuff that we've padded, and that will allow us to convert it to an ISO. So now that we've done that, we can use make ISO FS, so mk ISO FS um, dash o os dot ISO dash b specifying the binary file out dot bin and then the directory in which all of this is located um, is that and there we have which is uh, the, just the parent directory in my case so what this does is it basically creates a floppy emulator inside of the ISO so um, it's 2400 sectors emulating a 1200 kilobyte floppy. That's where our 1200k was up here. Um, and that that's that. So now if we look, we have our os.iso right here. Ignore that. Um, os.iso right here. And we can run VirtualBox. And uh, to uh, run this thing now, uh, we'll create a new VirtualBox, and it doesn't matter. It can uh, just leave it as Windows, uh, Microsoft Windows. Uh, if you wanted to just run not the ISO, but if you wanted to run the binary file, what you could uh, uh, switch to other for type, and then VirtualBox boot sector test. Um, for version and then name, we'll just call it OS. And then the, just go with the defaults. And then in here, uh, in storage, we have our floppy that we can select. Um, 
oops, we can uh, then select the binary file and uh, all files. Um, oh, first we have to we have to change the extension to a .img. Um, but regardless, that's one way you can do it there. But as you saw, it's only good for 64-bit. Uh, so that's not what we want, especially if we're trying to like if we're trying to build like a 32-bit operating system. As soon as we switch into 32-bit protected mode, it's going to start getting all angry at us. So the easiest way is to just leave it as Windows 7. It doesn't really matter. Um, just go with all of the defaults. Um, so there, and then and then in order to uh, then put our ISO into uh, live CD. We have our th th our virtual hard disk right there, and then the CD, uh, and then uh, we check live CD. Uh, click on the uh, the little CD icon. And then there's our ISO. And when we run it, we get Hello World.